this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Noctua NH-D15S. This is a premium heatsink cooler for your CPU that's designed to work with all manner of sockets and setups to deliver really good cooling performance. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you it unboxed and set up in a tiny little Lian Li mini snow edition case. And you can see just how gargantuan the thing is there. And I'm going to show you the setup and installation process for this heatsink with an LGA 1700. So that's Intel's 12th gen CPU socket. And there are some interesting highlights of that and the way this cooler is set up for that process and some interesting points that I'll get to. Now this is designed to work with a multitude of socket setups from both Intel and AMD. So it's actually compatible with a number of different setups and I'll leave all the specifications in the description on it. But it'll work with older Intel LGA socket types and AMD's AM4, AM3, AM2 and more. So it's multi-compatible and it's designed to fit in a number of different ways. Also this S version of the classic NHD15 is designed to work in more compatible ways so it will deliver a good cooling performance while also taking into account the different types of RAM and PCIe socket setups that you'll have in your case. So it's perfect for a build like this where you've got a small case and are going to be having potential issues with the sort of size and fitment of it. And there are some intriguing bits about that as we go through that I'll talk to you about. But it gives you things like 65 mil clearance for your RAM, which takes into account the size of like RGB RAM, for example. So if you have RAM that sits a bit higher than a traditional non-RGB setups, then it will work with that and it will also fit with the PCIe X16 slot, so your graphics card slot still give you enough room there as well. It's also designed so it will work with an extra fan. You'll see in the box it comes installed with one 140 mil fan, but you can also purchase another one and connect that up. And I'll talk a bit more about that later on. And that's where you'd get the best performance out of it. But having it in this sort of setup with just a single fan makes it more compatible because it's easy to fit in a case like mine or with the intricacies of that sort of setup and how that works. You also have the option to add a 120 mil fan instead of the 140 mil. And so that's interesting. And there are some other highlights too. For example, there's a low noise adapter that I'll show you in a minute that reduces the overall fan speed and therefore keeps it nice and quiet. This is the first time that I have done a full air-cooled CPU setup for a while, I've been using all-in-one coolers, but Noctua is renowned for having really good high performance both fans and CPU cooler setups and delivering really good cooling performance. At the end of this video I'm showing you a benchmark of what I got out of it and the performance from this. I'm also going to do a video separately on that Lian Lee case with all those Noctua fans in it, so stick around, subscribe if you're not already to see that in the near future. Now, I was immediately struck by this thing when I got it out of the box. And as you can see from the B-roll, it's a really nice looking heatsink. It's really good attention to detail. And there's some things that I wasn't able to capture on camera very easily. For example, the plate that sits against the CPU has a really fine detail on it. And it's really well machined. This is a very good looking piece of equipment, a really premium, well designed device. It's immediately obvious when you get it out of the box and you should know it anyway because Noctua is renowned in the industry for having not only those brown fans but also high performance, high quality devices and this is no exception to that and as I said it's a bit difficult to show but magnificent attention to detail and really good build quality. Now in the box as a new device you get a number of different mounting brackets and tools so it'll fit with all those different sockets that I was talking about. So you have a, um, instructions for the setup of both of them and you'll notice that in here I have the LGA 1700 instructions and that's because the newer releases of it, they automatically include what you need to mount in that. But it will work as standard with the other ones. So if you purchased one a bit of a while ago, you might find that you only have the support for the LGA 1150, 1151, 
LGO 1200 sockets, for example, or 2066 from Intel. And so there is a kit that you can purchase that I'm going to show you in a minute, which you can use to make sure that it will connect with a 1700 Intel socket, which is ever so slightly different. When you initially get the things out of the box, it looks a bit intimidating, but don't worry, I'm going to show you the setup process for it. It's actually a lot easier than it looks. And the good thing about this is the instructions included in the box are also really straightforward. You'll find some very good quality brackets that essentially attach to the motherboard on one side and then on the other you screw them down and I'll show you the process for that. And you have all the different thumb screws and connections. Now a lot of these ones you'll see, for example, these little black bungs, they go over the back bracket that you'll see here. And they're color coded so you can't accidentally put the wrong brackets on for AMD when you're trying to install on Intel, for example. You also note there are things like the wording on here, which tells you which way around that back plate should fit. So it's really difficult to get this wrong. And that's one of the highlights to it. The other thing that I'd highly recommend checking out and I'll link to in the description is Noctua has a configurator tool, which essentially lets you know whether it's compatible, whether this is compatible with your motherboard and also your case, because it's obviously something to bear in mind just how big it is. And there are some intricacies that I'll show you a bit later, which are worth knowing as well. In the box, you also get a low noise adapter cable and some high quality thermal paste and a little knock to a badge as well. So a little sticker that you can stick somewhere on your case. If you're proud of your knock to it install, you can use that. And so you can see all the tools and everything laid out here for your enjoyment, including that large screwdriver, which is conveniently included and will allow for easy installation a bit later on. Don't be intimidated by the setup because it is a lot easier than it looks. Now, here's the kit that you can get separately, which allows for upgrades. So if you already have the NHD 15S and you want to take it and use it on LGA 1700, you can get this kit and it basically gives you everything you need in a convenient package. And you can basically ignore everything that came with the cooler originally. And you have this set up instead. The instructions for doing it and how to mount it. But everything's already sort of pre-installed and set up as well. So it makes life a little bit easier. For example, you'll notice when it got the cooler out of its box that the back plate didn't have the pins in it. This one does. So you can see when you pull it out of here, they're already pre-installed for you. Normally you'd have to go about the installation process for these. Now you don't have to. So it makes it even easier and more straightforward. This also skips that step that we would go through otherwise. And I'm going to quickly skip through the step of unboxing that to show you what you got in the box. So you can see that you have these rubber standoffs. So basically I'm just showing the installation process as it would be just imagine the motherboards there and I'll show you that in a second. But it's good because this allows you to sort of practice the logic of how it's going to work before you actually go about it if you're worried about how it's going to be set up. So you basically have the back plate installed on the motherboard with those pins pointing through. You then put the standoffs in and then you can put these brackets on top of that and then you screw them down. And then the cooler will then sit on top of this bracket and I'll show you how to do that. But the good thing about this is also that you can reverse the way it's fit. So the setup of that. So you just putting those on and screwing it down. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But basically because of this design, you're able to mount this cooler in two different ways. And that becomes useful in a minute. And I'll talk to you about why. Because the design of your motherboard and perhaps your RAM might have an influence on how this is seated in your case and what you're doing with it. So you can see once you've got all that set up, there are two pins basically on the sides of those brackets and then these screws will just drop down on top of it. So imagine if you will that we're putting it down on top of the CPU now and we have those mounting screws on either side. One of the things you have to do before you go about this process is remove the fan then let you give access to those screws. The other thing that I wanted to show is that with this Strix motherboard from a Zeus that I have some VRM brackets. I was actually warned by Noctua about this and you'll find this in the compatibility tool that you should normally mount the cooler this way around. This is the preferred setup for it. So the air is pulled from the front of your case and through and then exhausted out the back. But what you'll notice is the VRM plastic mounting at the top is problematic because the heatsink 
elements of the cooler are basically touching it or they would be if it was mounted in this way so that would result in problems because obviously a lot of heat would be going through there and that would be touching the plastic on your motherboard not ideal but not to worry because you can mount it the other way so you can see me testing out how that would look and how it would fit there and that gives you an idea of making sure that it's going to fit and you can see the clearance of the ram in this direction as well but you'll also know you're just pointing out here where that heat sink pipe would basically be pressing up against the top of the motherboard which wouldn't be ideal but that's not to worry because as i said you can fit this in two different directions so you can turn it around so now i'm going to show you the proper installation process for this this is a lot easier if you do it when the motherboard isn't in the case obviously you don't have to do it this way but this makes things a lot easier so we're installing the bracket on the back of the motherboard with the pins then pushing through to the front as i said this is lga 1700 Intel's 12th gen setup and this is the process for installing that but the instructions are included for all the other sockets as well and it's dead easy to do. Now we're allowing it flat and you can see I've got it on the anti-static bag that it came with to protect it while I'm doing it and then we're basically just putting those blue standoff screws in place. Now I showed you already how you can put the brackets down in one position you're now able to do it in either of those mounting positions. So we can put it one way or we can put it the other way. You have the flexibility to be able to do it in both. So just for quick demonstration purposes, because your motherboard may vary, you can either do it in one way or the other, and it will fit in both directions with some slight differences in that. But you can see the process is the same. Standoff screws, those brackets, and screwing them down with the thumb screws, and then you put the cooler on top. Obviously, we need to make sure that we use the thermal paste included or some extra, if you prefer, the NTH2, for example, thermal compound that Noctua does. You could purchase that, but this one is included with the cooler. The next stage is to go back to the cooler itself, and we need to remove that fan before you set it down onto the CPU. The reason for that is removing the fan gives you access to the two screws that we'll be using to secure it down onto the pins. So you need to take that off. There are a couple of metal brackets on the side that need some convincing to come off. They basically just lever off the side there, but I won't say that it's easy because it was quite a fight against the rather sharp fins on the radiator. But it does come off and I will be happy to report that it goes on a lot easier than it comes off. That 140mm fan has a cable that will connect to the CPU fan header output on your motherboard, and I'll show you where that is in a minute. And you do also have the option to potentially mount a second fan as well, so if you have the space in your case, which I'll demonstrate I won't in this, and with this orientation of the radiator, then you can potentially have one extra fan to give you even better cooling so 240 mil fans installed in this way you will then use either the secondary cpu fan header on your motherboard or you could use a y splitter cable that's included with the extra fan to connect it up in this case i'll just be using one but here's the process for it i'm seating the heat sink down carefully onto the cpu and then we use the included screwdriver to basically screw these down until they won't go any further very gently I screw a little bit on each side then recommends three turns for each to begin with and then just screw it down until you can't do it anymore but not so hard that you're going to put unnecessary pressure down on it once that's done we then just basically seating the fan back in position now because the standard fitment as I said the best way to install it would be facing the other way so you'd have uh, air from the front of your case because usually you have intake fans on the front or the front side as you'll see on my case that would then pull air through the radiator and then out the back using this fan and then exhaust out the back of your case because of the setup of this motherboard unfortunately i can't do that but you can mount it this way so essentially i'll still have cold air being pulled into the case and then it'll be exhausted through the top if I had the space, you could maybe use this 140 mil fan as an additional one on either side and use that to give an extra sort of push-pull setup where you're pulling more air through and cooling it even better. Unfortunately, as you'll see in testing purposes there, there's just not going to be enough room at the bottom of it between that and the graphics card and at the top because of the size of the case because unfortunately, as you can see, because it's a mini case, 
a Leon Lee mini snow edition. There's just not going to be the space there with the 120 mil fans at the top of the case. Actually, side note, I found that even installing the motherboard itself was a very tight fit here. And I actually had to remove those top fans so I could access the CPU fan. Now you can see on this motherboard, there's two CPU fan headers. The optional one on the right and the standard one on the left. Because I only have one fan, I can install it in this single CPU fan header as you normally would. But if you decided that you had enough space in your case for the two fans, you could also use the optional one or you could use an included wire splitter to split that connection so you have two fans being powered by one socket. The end result in the mini case, this thing looks huge. It is huge anyway, and that's obviously intentional because it's designed to deliver a really good cooling performance without any water. And obviously in using the Noctua fans throughout the case, should result in a good overall performance as well and an interesting look that completely lacks RGB. If you want to see more about this case, be sure to come back and watch the full unboxing and installation of this. It has been an experience and it is a nice looking setup, fairly unusual. Now I run some benchmarks with Cinebench R23 to really push the CPU to its limits and also to test the overall performance. Obviously you need to take this with a pinch of salt because it's going to vary depending on what CPU you're using, what fans you're using and also your case as a whole. And the results here were interesting. I found that the package temperatures got up to 98 degrees. I wonder whether I need to reapply the thermal paste slightly or make some tweaks. For reference, this is Intel 12 900K, which is known to run really hot, especially when you're pushing it to its limits with something like this. And Cinebench does do some extreme testing and puts it under a very high load that you wouldn't normally get with something like gaming or just general everyday use. The score came out at around 26,000 though, so it did really well in terms of scoring. But those overall temperatures are pretty hot. You can see hardware monitor on the left here so you can get an idea of the core scores and the overall package temperature and the maximum level that reached. It was certainly running quite warm. As I said, some trickery around undervolting the CPU. Perhaps redoing my thermal paste might improve things as well. But the point is, this doesn't run particularly hot. You also have the option, as you saw already run, I briefly showed it. There's a cable included in the box which allows you to install a cable between the fan and the motherboard which will then allow it to be in a quieter mode and that basically gives you a low noise adapter which sets it from a maximum of 1500 rpm on that fan to 1200 instead for the maximum cooling performance and that thing keeps things running a lot quieter if you're also using the noctua fans with pwm control on your motherboard you can potentially set them to silent or quiet modes with a motherboard software or in your BIOS and adjust the fan speed accordingly and get a very quiet overall experience with excellent cooling performance. This has been the Provoke Brawn. Hope you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the description for all the specs and other information. And I'd highly recommend if you haven't purchased this yet that you check out the configurator and compatibility tool, which will let you know whether it will fit in your case and with your motherboard of choice and sort of the fitment of it because obviously if I'd purchased and tried to mount it in the standard position I really would have come across with this. This has been the Provoke Prawn, thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn, hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well and have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel and most importantly have a great life.